Today, I want to show you how you can create a stunning parallax effect in your next Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. And this is a showstopper. If you use this, I can guarantee you'll have at least one person come up to you in your next presentation to ask you how you created this. It turns out it's pretty easy to pull off, so let's check it out. Here I am in PowerPoint, and I have three images on the slide that I'm going to use as part of this parallax effect. If you wanna follow along today, I've included a link to this deck right up here. If you'd rather try your own images and you're a Microsoft 365 subscriber, if you go up to insert on the top ribbon and then click on images and stock images, you'll find a massive collection of different images that you can use as your background. Now, let's say you're not a Microsoft 365 subscriber. You're not out of luck. There's a fantastic website called pexels.com. You can click on it right up here. And they offer tons and tons of free stock photos and also videos. I use it all the time in my different creations. To help me with the parallax effect, I wanna turn on guides. This will help me know where the edges of the slide are. And in a moment, you'll see why this is important. To turn on guides, let's go up to the top tabs and click on the one titled view. Within the show category, right in about the middle, you'll see a few different options. Let's check the box that says guides. Here you'll see a vertical line and a horizontal line appear on your slide. Let's take the vertical line and position that over on the leftmost side of the slide. I also wanna add another guide to the right-hand side of the slide. So I'll right click on the vertical guideline and then I'll click on add another vertical guide. And then I'll take this one and I'll position it over on the right-hand side. I'm going to do the same with the horizontal guide. I'll take it and position it at the top of the slide. Then I'll right click on it, add another horizontal guide, and then I'll position that at the bottom of the slide. Next, I wanna make sure that all of my images are on the appropriate layer. So I wanna have the background image be the backmost layer. And then I want the logo to be the middle layer and I want myself to be on the topmost layer. By far, the easiest way to check this is to simply click on one of your images. I'll click on the background. Then go up to the top ribbon and click on picture format. All the way over on the right hand side, click on selection pane. This will open up the selection pane over on the right hand side. Whatever item appears at the top of the list is the topmost layer, and whatever appears at the bottom of the list is the bottommost layer. So here I can see that Kevin is currently the topmost layer and the background's at the very bottom and then my logo's right in the middle. So this is all exactly where I want it to be. But I wanted to call this out because this is by far the easiest way to adjust the different layers of elements on your slide. Next, I want to remove the background from the photo of myself and I can use PowerPoint to do this. Here I'll click on my photo. Up on the top ribbon, I'll go up to picture format and all the way over on the left-hand side, there's the option to remove background. When I click on that, I'll see a whole bunch of magenta appear in the photo. PowerPoint will remove the area in magenta and it'll keep the areas that are colored. Now, PowerPoint does a decent job, but it didn't correctly identify everything. I can go back and fine tune what areas PowerPoint keeps. Up in the top left-hand corner, I can mark areas to keep. So here I'll go through and highlight a few of the areas that should be included. I could also go up to the top and I can mark areas to remove. Now, especially with more complex photos, it might take a little bit of back and forth and highlighting, but once you're satisfied with the result, simply go up to the top left-hand corner and then click on Keep Changes. With that all now out of the way, we're ready to start positioning our different images on the slide. And this is going to be the starting position for the parallax effect. First, I'll take the background and I'm going to expand it so it's far larger than the slide. And I'll position it right at about here. This is where the guides are extremely helpful because we can very easily visually tell where the actual visible area of the slide is. 
Next, I'll take the logo and I want it to start off the slide. So I'm going to drag it over onto the left hand side so it's just off the slide. Also, I want myself to appear in the center of the slide. So I'll put myself right here. We're now ready to apply the parallax effect and I'll show you two different ways that you can apply it. First, we'll use animations and this should work with just about any version of PowerPoint. And then I'll show you how you can also apply it using Morph. This is probably a little bit easier, but it's only available in more recent versions of PowerPoint. To apply the parallax effect using animations, we'll start from the backmost layer and then we'll work our way up. With the background, I want it to move over the slide just like that, and we can use an animation for that. Here I'll select the background and let's go up to the top tab titled Animations. Within Animations, over on the right hand side, let's click on this Add Animation dropdown. And if we scroll down, here's the option for a motion path line. I'll select this one. By default, the animation has it moved downwards, but I want it to move over to the right. So here with this object selected, I'll click on Effect Options, and then I'll click on Right. I've now applied the animation, and in the top left-hand corner, I can click on Preview to look at what the animation looks like, and that looks pretty good. If I want to adjust the start point and the end point, over here I can click on this number one. And when I click on that, here I see a green circle that indicates the start point, and here I see a red circle that indicates the end point. Now I could drag this red circle over to the right, or I could drag it over to the left if I want it to be shorter or longer. If I want to keep this so it's a perfectly straight line, I can press the shift key and then drag it over and that'll ensure that it stays a perfect line. Now, I'm pretty happy with the initial movement, so I'll leave it right at about there. Next, I want to apply a similar animation to the logo. Here, I'll select the logo. I'll go up to Add Animation, and once again, I'll scroll down and select the Motion Path Line Animation. Just like with the background, by default, it moves down, and I want this to move right. So here, I'll go up to Effect Options, and I'll select over to the right. You'll see that the animation stops at about right at this point, so I want to adjust the endpoint. Just like we did before, I can click on the number. I'll click on the number two, and here I see the endpoint is not even quite on the slide. So here I'll select the dot, I'll also press the shift key, and then I'll pull the logo all the way over to the right hand side of the slide. So the endpoint will be right at about here. Next, I can preview what the animation looks like so far. Here I'll click on preview. And there I see the background moves first, followed by the logo. In a moment, we'll change the order of the animations, but so far I'm happy with the positioning. Next, I wanna add some animation to myself. Here I'll select my image, I'll go to Add Animation, and once again, let's scroll down and then select the Line Motion Path. Once again, by default, it moves to the bottom. Let's go up to Effect Options, and this time let's select over to the left. It looks like my image moves over to the left hand side and I'm happy with the distance that it moves. So that looks good right now. Now that I've applied all of the different animations, let's look at how it's coming together. Here I'll click on preview in the top left hand corner. I can see the background move, I see the logo move, and I could also see myself move. Now they all move somewhat fast. So here I'll select all of the different items and for the duration, I'm going to set it to six seconds. This now applies the duration to all of these different images. Also, I want all of the different images to animate at the same time. Also, within animations on the ribbon, over on the right-hand side, let's open up the animation pane. And here I can see that they're currently running sequentially. So I click and the first animation runs, then I click again and the next one runs, but I, I want all of them to run at the same time. Here I'll right-click on the logo and I'll click on Start with Previous and I'll do the same with my photo. So now they'll all start to play at the same time. So now when I click on preview, now we can see the background, me, and the logo all move at the same time. And that's my parallax effect. It looks pretty good. Next, I wanna show you how you could create the same effect using the morph transition, 
Once again, I think this approach is a little bit easier, but it does also require a more recent version of PowerPoint. Over on the left-hand side, let's copy this slide so we can also use this as a start point. I'll press Control D and that'll create a duplicate. On slide number two, over in the animation pane, I'll delete all of the different animations. Now that we've deleted all of the animations, let's go over to the left-hand side again where we can see all of the slides. Here I'll press Control D and once again, I'll create a duplicate. For the morph transition, this first slide here will be the beginning slide, or basically the first step of our animation. And then the second slide will be the end point of the animation, so where all of the images will finish up. So here, once again, I want the cookie logo to end up right at about here on the slide. I also wanna move myself over to this point and then we'll take the background image and I'll move it down just a little bit so the background will move. I've now positioned everything where I want it. To apply the morph transition, I'll go up to the top tabs and click on transitions. And here I see the option for morph. I'll click on morph and overall it looks pretty good. It is moving a little bit fast. So over here, I can also adjust the duration. I'll set it to six seconds, just like I did with the animation. And then I'll hit enter. And over on the left-hand side, I can click on preview to see what this looks like. And check that out. So using the morph transition, we can create something that looks very similar to what we created with animations. And personally, I think using morph is a little bit easier, but it's really your preference. You could use either approach. All right, well, that's how easy it is to create the parallax effect. And you'll probably wanna reserve this for those special reveal moments in your presentation. It also works best when you have many different layers. So have fun experimenting with it to see what you can create. To see more PowerPoint tutorials like this one, check out the playlist right up above. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.